Okay, so first I would like to thank the meeting organizer to give me the chance to opportunity to share off our work here. The title of my talk is a single cell RNA seq profiling identified the molecular signatures and the transcriptional regulatory network uh, controller maturation. And this work is funded by the LEM map through NIH. Um, since not all of you working in the LEM field, I just like to give a brief introduction. So LEM is a quite complex organ, uh, contains more than 40 different cell types uh, derived in from three different components. And the LEM development process is a highly um, coordinated, regulated process with a stage-specific change as shown here. Um, so the last stage of the learning development um, is uh, from mouse, is from E15 all the way to postnatal training, um, is critical important for learning maturation. During this period of time, the learning, um, fetal lens undergoes remarkable structure functional changes, uh, including the mesenchyme gauge getting much thinner and uh, the seculars become type one and uh, type two cells. And type one cells uh, form a close contact with capillary to facilitate the gas exchange. Type two cells in increase production of surfactant proteins and the lipids to prepare the lens ready for the air breeze at birth. Um, so this stage also directly relevant to, to clinic um, because the um, lung in prematurity are directly associated with many severe respiratory disease, including IDIS, which is the leading uh, cause for the mobility and motility for the newborn infants. And this uh, stage is also our research focus. For the recent couple of years, we have uh, developed the analytic pipelines using the functional genomics and the systems biology tool um, to analyze large-scale RNA expression data from learn specific gene deletion mutation mouse models to review the transcriptional network control and maturation. Um, some examples are highlighted here. We're using the static model to construct the transcriptional regulatory network control the surfactant homeostasis. We also built the dynamic model for, uh, to study the learn normal maturation time course. Uh, we performed the meta-analysis of the uh, expression from mouse models sharing the common respiratory distress phenotype at birth. From last year, we officially kind of stepped into the single cell uh, genomics to identify the cell specific um, gene signatures and uh, functions in the developing learn. So why we want to study the transcriptome at a single cell level? Because um, the development events are largely operated in the single cell level. The single cell level are quite heterogeneity uh, within, even within very homogeneous cell population. The recent advance in microfluidites and uh, next generation sequencing um, technologies provide opportunity to begin measuring and understand the cell heterogeneity in the complex system. And a study the lens transcription at single cell level, of course, will significantly improve the sensitivity and the resolution. Um, and also, the network you build from the data will directly reflect the physiology and the pathological phenotypes of the cell. The challenge is no uh, existing ready-to-go pipelines um, available for the analysis. So um, we start with building the analytic pipeline um, in our phase one. So. Um, the single cell analytic approach uh, is uh, uh, briefly uh, uh, listed here. You isolate the single cells from protease dispersed lens, um, and then you separate them using the Frodan C1 auto prep system and uh, convert your RNA into a sequencing ready library. And then you can sequence up to 96 individual cells per run on the Illumina uh, 2400 high seq and our part is mostly here is the uh, data analysis. 
Um, our pipeline build up includes as five components. Um, the input file we directed from the aligned data either using the FPCAM or row counts. And uh, you do the gene pre-filtering by removing genes with very low expression or with a very low specificity, basically like a ribosomal genes we removed in the beginning. Um, and then um, the third component is the cell type identification. We're using a uh, combined of supervised and unsupervised cross train uh, algorithm to uh, separate the cells into different clusters uh, based on their expression similarity and followed by functional analysis and biomarker validation. The fourth component is the cell type specific signature identification. Uh, for this, we use a logistic regression model um, to integrate uh, common gene, which is uh, uh, defined as the genes commonly expressed in the cell type. Unique genes are genes that are selective expressed in the, film, uh, in the cell type. And T statistic, which is uh, uh, the group mean comparison of this particular cell type with all different other cell types. Um, once you have the specific defined cell type, we uh, con construct a, a, a transcriptional network for each cell type. And then we predict the herbs, which we think is a potential driving force to determine the cell fate. So um, this is the E16.5 data. Um, we did it twice, so the outer circle is the first set of data and the inner circle is the second um, set of the sample preparation. And we, uh, total of 148 cells, we uh, dissect them into nine clusters, like uh, C9 here is epithelia, and uh, C5 here is a matrix fibroblast. So this is a smooth muscle cell type. This is a proliferative, uh, um, mesenchyme progenitor kind of, and uh, this is uh, endophilia, and uh, several, uh, this is uh, myeloid uh, immune cells, and several of the small undefined uh, transitional cell types. This is the heat map of the signatures for the nine different uh, cell types. And this is the top 20 or top 40 um, of the marker genes for each cluster. And uh, through the single cell analysis, like I mentioned, uh, you can observe um, very clearly evident uh, heterogeneity even within the same cell type. And uh, here we show the example using the principal components analysis. You can further dissect the epithelial cells into four subclusters, like uh, we call the C9 as epithelia, we call C9 A, B, C, D. And uh, doing the functional enrichment analysis of these four subclusters, they indeed reveal different functions. For example, here, C9A, we call the transient uh, epithelia progenitor cell, which is uh, SOX9 ID2 positive, and uh, they are functionally involved in the proliferation of epithelia, early limb branching morphogenesis. And C9B is a pre-type 2 cells, it's already um, start to have the you know function of the uptake lipids and transport and the cell differentiation, so indicate the relative mature cell stage. And the C9C is a pre-type one cells express many of the type one typical markers, and uh, functionally involved in the uh, fluid transport, uh, inflammation, and limb development. C9D we call it epithelial progenitor, which is FOX2 positive. It's uh, strongly involved in the uh, regulation of cell cycle proliferation. And uh, um, we can point later why we call this one is transient and this one we, we hypothesis may be a adult stem cell. And uh, uh, <coughs> here we want to prove uh, physically we can detect the, the four subtypes of epithelia. We're using the immunofluorescent confocal microscope, and uh, you can see the marker of, uh, you know, uh, SOX9, SPC, and uh, FOX8-2, and uh, HOPAX. Um, SOX9 is more 
in the uh, proliferate rosette. And uh, we also characterize the cell uh, proliferation property using the co-staining of uh, phosphohistone H3. And uh, you can see the SOX9 group are very proliferative and uh, uh, HOPX, uh, sorry, the FOXA2 group are very proliferative, while the HOPX is uh, mostly expressed in the dilated uh, tubes and uh, they're not proliferative. And uh, we went further to um, study the ontogenic changes of the major lens cell types um, through the lens maturation. The left panel is the epithelial subtype, the right panel is the mesenchyme subtypes. And uh, um, to uh, play them in an order of proliferative rate, we're using a group of uh, about 700 cell, uh, cell cycle markers to indicate the cell, different, uh, cell uh, proliferation status. You can see here, along with the lens maturation, the cell cycle uh, markers are dramatically goes down. Um, and uh, this is the SOX, SOX9 uh, positive transient progenitor, and this goes down as well. And uh, type, pre-type 1, type 2 cell are lens mature cells, and uh, they are induced through lens maturation. And this line is interesting. This is uh, FOXA2 positive uh, cells. They are stay proliferative and uh, across the lens maturation in a low level. So it's maybe, uh, we, we think it's, uh, we hypothesis it's maybe stands for uh, some of the epithelial adult stem cells. Um, the, similarly, we did the ordering for the mesenchyme and uh, here is the proliferative C1 clustering, proliferative fibroblast, and then some of the transient fibroblasts and the undefined ones, and then we have the uh, myofibroblast, so parasite, and the, uh, endophilia, and the matrix fibroblast. And you can see the matrix fibroblasts are the most uh, differentiated ones here, induced during the maturation. Um, here we further analyzed the, the mesenchyme fibroblast, uh, the sequential order of the uh, of their um, based on using the monoca with um, uh, pseudo time order. This is using a recent published tool by Trapnell. Um, we can see here the analysis shown C1 is actually maybe a common um, progenitor of the mesenchyme, and uh, it uh, derived into uh, E16 myofibroblast and then uh, um, derive further into the smooth muscle at E18. And another branch of C1 derived into um, uh, E16 uh, matrix fibroblast and uh, derived further into E18 uh, matrix fibroblast and a lipofibroblast. So those are more mature forms. So those studies and definitely extended our un understanding of the lens mesenchyme cell lineage. Um, our study also provides a uh, framework to help people start to working on the delineated the class talk class cell types. Um, here is an example showing the class talk between lens epithelial cells and endothelial cells through the extracell extracellular matrix protein protein interaction. The orange nodes, the, the yellow nodes, are uh, the extracellular matrix genes expressed in the endothelia, and the blue nodes are from the epithelia. The lines uh, indicate the protein protein interaction. And uh, some of the nodes already being, the interaction already being confirmed by literature. For example, here, DROP and uh, CDH1. Sorry. CDH1. And so JUP is, a, we know it's a function as a common junctional plaque protein, play a central role in the structure and a function of the submembrane plaques. And uh, JUP is known to form uh, adhesion complex with E cadherin, which is the CDH1. And CDH1 transfection also known to re, uh, regulate the, um, to result a re upregulation of JUP. And um, so, um, 
like I point out, for each of the cell type, we can construct a transcriptional regulatory network and uh, predict uh, the driving force of that. And uh, this is example of epithelia, uh, transcriptional factor and the target network. The A1, uh, the panel A shows the entire network. All the orange nodes are represent uh, transcriptional factors. Blue ones are re uh, represent signaling molecules, and the blue uh, and the green ones are target genes. And you can zoom in any of the transcriptional factor of your interest. In, for example, here you can uh, construct this one hop subnetwork for the hop X, and uh, so the, all the surrounding genes are known. Many of them are known type one cell markers. Um, so for this, it indicates hop X can, can be a driving force, uh, play an essential role to determine the type one cell uh, differentiation. So in summary, um, we have developed an uh, analytic pipeline for the analysis of single cell seq data. Uh, we uh, identify major cell types in the fetal lung, uh, including four subtypes of epithelial cells, four subtypes of fibroblast, endothelial cells, smooth muscle, parasite, um, myeloid are classified by their expression and function. And we identified the cell-specific gene signature, key regulator, and the cell uh, surface marker, and so on and so forth for each cell type, which is a great resource for the entire community. And the state study provide a framework to start delineate cell signatures, uh, signaling, and uh, communication across cell types, which I don't have time to get into. Is, you know, some of the examples can show the paracrine, autocrine signaling, as well as protein-protein interaction. Um, the algorithms were developed to map lens types, specific transcriptional regwork, and identify driving force. So um, I would like to thank my, the people who works for me, especially Ming Zhe Guo. He is a very talented um, PhD student. He did many work in the pipeline development. And uh, the co-workers in the LearnMap group, Dr. Wissett is the lead for the LearnMap Research Center. Uh, Dr. Potter set up the C1 um, system. and. Uh, Dr. Arno and Philip um, is in the bioinformatic group. And uh, Dr. Shannon did the uh, single cell isolation, and uh, Joe did the, the pretty uh, immunoconfocal microscope. And uh, thank you for listening and the questions. <laughs> Very nice talk. Uh, you, it seems like you have made some effort to examine the cell-cell relationship, right, here. So, um, but I'm just wondering, have you ever think about how to construct a spatial relationship between the 96 cells? And how to see this spatial ship, the, the, the relationship changes mm -hmm. during the development of these cells? Is that possible or anything about that? Um, it is a challenge. I think uh, uh, for the spatial relationship is very important. I think we should do the like a 3D imaging and uh, using the vivo cells. And uh, not for this. This is already isolated. You lost the you know the the neighborhood. But uh, yeah. So we did. S it's very very initial stage. So basically, you can you know like. Uh, trace the, the cells and the ship and, the, and measure the rough distance around the things. And the, the, you know, so basically the, the, how to convert the image into the digital and then we can do the data mining, that's still a long way to go. But it's a, it's a very exciting and a challenge in the new bioinformatic challenge, I think. Yeah. Hi, here. How did you come up with the transconfactor and target network? 
Okay, so no, this is not a prediction of like a, this is a definitely a target. So basically, uh, at this stage, we just based on the gene ontology, this is the uh, transcriptional factors with all the blues, and uh, this is a signaling molecules with all the runs, and all other genes we just call the target. It's not necessary. Uh, 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 so we do, the con connection is through the, uh, we have several ways we, Mm, the ones I show is using conditional probability, but we can also integrate with the like uh, the partial correlation model. We can um, use the the regression model, and we think actually from our experience, each of them predict a, a different territory, and then so integration maybe it's a good way to to. Thing. And also, it's very powerful is to, if you have other external knowledge, like integrated the chip seq data, all those will imp improve the prediction. But the figure I'm showing here is, is, is not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the entire epithelia. So with all the transcriptional factors and the signaling molecule in the epithelial cells, as long as it's predicted as a signature for the epithelia, we, we used that as an input to build up the, the, the hairball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, interesting story. Uh, I have two questions. First, uh, how you build the network, how the network will be helpful to the future work? That's first. Second, uh, uh, maybe they are microarray dead before, not a single cell. So maybe you can uh, compare your work with the mixed uh, cell expression data because, you know, a single cell, uh, the cell development may relate to the environment, like the niche in cancer, but uh, maybe you can compare in these mm -hmm. two parts to find something, mm -hmm. two questions. Yeah, Thank those you. are good questions. Um, the first one, I kind of addressed uh, the previous gentleman's question uh, for the network, uh, um, construction, we are uh, using majorly three, because uh, we realize seems like a, not a single category can be always superior for all the data sets. So what we did is using, we have a, we have a pipeline, we do three territory, like uh, the conditional probability, which is a basin network, and we do a, a linear, like a correlation type of the network, and we do uh, another one is a, a regression model. and then. Using three of them, we have uh, using uh, like a learning ROC. We have s some of the small uh, gold standard, and to see which method actually uh, better for this. Even the different cell type actually showing different model are so. That's why I didn't have a pipeline. So this is definitely a better one. So you had to try, and uh, maybe uh, the other thing is just close your eyes. You do all and combine. I think that's that's all the options, and then um, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. For that, that that is the yeah. So that is the the one we call the uh, essential gene prediction. And so we basically using based on the uh, central net, we have uh, uh, six metrics built up for that uh, using the measure the centenarity, degree of centenarity, nearness, and uh, you know the one part centenarity. And then we're also doing the disruptive ones, like you said, the fragmentation. We take one out, just like the in silicon knockout, and see how. Is, is the, the, the network totally broken or not? So to so combine that, we can, um, I don't have time to really get into the, the detail. We have the table. You can rank the genes, which are the top 10 um, genes that are most important for this cell type. Yeah, and in terms of uh, meta-analysis, exactly, we already use it. And I think, because uh, there's not such, you know, single cell is still very expensive. In fact, the one where I used for the learn maturation time course is the one for microarray. So we did uh, the microarray from the E15, E16, all the way to postnatal one. So we already have a dynamic, but the whole learn. And now we just uh, combine with the single cell, we see which cell type actually share the pattern. Thank you.